So my first impression, you know, you went into Harry's office, it was full of box files. One on Leonardo da Vinci, one on some artists, one on a designer. It was like walking into Harry Kretter's brain, right, his office. And it was just, everything was fascinating. But I just knew he was a fabulous chap. He had this wonderful energy and enthusiasm and kind of intellect, this great mind. So I, you know, I, I knew straight away that I wanted to work with this chap because he just seemed like such a fascinating idea. First of all, I, I see Harry as a, really a visionary scientist. But he, he was also a terrific spokesman for science and always has been. We all know that if we've heard him talk. Thirdly, he was a great teacher, a, a t great teacher of his graduate students, but also after the C60 fame, he proved himself to be a marvelous teacher of general non-scientific population and children. He came last year and did one of his buckyball events with a hundred children, <laughs> many of them from very deprived backgrounds and from a school that was in special measures. And those children were so inspired by Harry that uh, quite a few of them now are coming to an after-school science and engineering club that the Royal Society of Chemistry has been helping to um, fund. And some of their parents even came. I have a picture of a little boy with a buckyball on his head, um, <laughs> absolutely thrilled, um, because they'd never come across any kind of science like that. There was interest in everything he did because there was this puzzle. He, he loves solving puzzles. Mm. And so actually everything was interesting when you have someone who's interested and can show it to you. you know. It's always Think of Harry as a bit like a detective, really. He's interested if there's something he doesn't understand. Most of us, if we see something we don't understand, we sort of back away a bit, because we like to be in our own little discipline. He's actually kind of gets excited when he meets something he doesn't understand. So it was always tremendously, you know, inspiring. One knows right away that you're, you're talking to a, you know, to a special person, to a character, right? And <laughs> I haven't changed my mind ever since. <laughs> in competitions like this in science, there, there usually are repercussions that are pretty bitter. You know, things don't usually work out real smoothly between competitors in science. But the thing that I'm extremely proud of, that we came out of it friends. <laughs> we, we really did. It, it's like a a very tough football battle, you know, and you'd think, sometimes I look at sports events and I think, how can they come out of that and really hug each other at the end? That's kind of the way I felt about this. Uh, we had a real battle going for a good many years and it kind of went this way and that way, but at the end, we were really good friends and I really treasure that. Yes, we've always had a great relationship, so we used to play tennis together. We've been meeting every year, virtually every year. We've tried to make it an annual meeting where we get together for two or three days. We discuss a bit of science, we drink nice wine, we smoke a cigar, <laughs> a nice Cuban cigar. And um, not just science, going to museums in Brussels, going to art museums and uh, discussing uh, other cultural aspects of life. He's just a good person. And I, ha I have several stories which are private with me between Harry and I that, that I'll never tell. But they are examples of, the, of extreme generosity, things that Harry did for me that proved to me what I already knew and that Harry is just a good guy. <laughs>